Hi, Premier. Hi. Nice to see you again. Good to Thanks see you. Thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Uh, you announced in your speech today that you had made sort of a business pitch, a plan to the to the Prime Minister that included the possibility and the likelihood, I guess, of mm -hmm. buying two new um, unit trains mm -hmm. uh, to transport uh, oil. Is that at the expense or in lieu of cutting production levels? Um, you know, we haven't uh, made the final decision on, on the uh, curtailment issue, so uh, it's neither at this point. It is simply uh, a thing that uh, we think is going to have a medium uh, to, well, at least a medium term uh, bump uh, to uh, uh, what we receive um, for, the, for the product that we're shipping. And so that's why we're doing it uh, with Real. It's not necessarily linked, could be, but it doesn't need to be. When will you make a decision on the production levels? Uh, we'll be making a decision around on, on the, the range of suites that we have at our disposal for more short-term um, actions uh, within the next week or so. Jason Kenney is saying or is asking, pitching the idea of a 10% a mandatory 10% cut in production. What do you think about that? Well, what he's doing is is uh, talking about something that's been out there for uh, several weeks now already. Did the companies ask for 10% specifically? Uh, they, I think some did. Yes, yeah, some okay. did. Uh, so it's not new what he's saying. Um, you know, the the fact of the matter is, is I sat down with the energy executives uh, several weeks ago, and we started having these conversations, not specifically curtailment because we couldn't have it in those meetings, but uh, uh, but we've been hearing from uh, energy executives for several weeks now um, on this, and of course our envoys have been working uh, very diligently just over the last week or so collecting much more industry uh, or company specific uh, assessments of what consequences of different types of, of actions uh, that we could take would be um, um, on the industry as well as on particular companies. So um, it's something that we've been fully seized up. We're, we're, we're researching on it. So at the end of the day, our decision will be based on um, our overall view of uh, what the consequences of this are. Um, and, uh, and so that's what we're going to base it on. It's not sort of opinions of particular um, advocates one way or the other. It's really about the overall thing. What we know is that it's a very different, uh, the industry looks different now than it did when uh, Premier Lougheed last did this. It, the, the different players are, uh, have different um, uh, corporate profiles. And so um, the, the, the impact of this kind of action will play out uh, in a different way than it would have before. Um, and so we have to really have a good handle on that um, and, and we need to uh, make sure that we've got as much information as possible. Is it possible though to make it mandatory given the differences between those companies? That there are some who are advocating for it and there are some who are saying no way, don't do this. Well I think uh, the, the differences of opinions is not really the issue. Uh, there's always going to be differences of opinions and government's job is to is to uh, set the right course of action and understand that you're not always going to have everybody on side with where you go. Uh, the, the challenge for us is to find the overall best outcome for the people of Alberta um, and uh, in, in this matter both as, as uh, people who own the resource as well as people who work within the industry and rely on the industry. So that's what we're working on doing. When did you send the uh, train pitch to the Prime Minister? Uh, it was, well, we started uh, having conversations uh, between officials uh, well over a month ago. Um, we sent a formal pitch, I think, a couple of weeks ago, but quite frankly, even then, we were saying, listen, we're doing a lot of work on this, get your officials to come and talk to our officials and we'll work out the details uh, in with, with more specificity. Uh, so we've been talking with them about it in a number of different forums for about a month now. Um, and, uh, you know, I think they're looking at it now, although, um, you know, uh, anyway, we'll see what Any comes. signs of life from them, though? Have they indicated that they're favorable to it, open to it? Is there a point at which they'll give you a decision by? Have they communicated any of that to no, you? No, we haven't gotten that kind of specificity. I think, it, it, you know, I, I'm only speculating now. Uh, you know, we've gotten some preliminary responses. I think what's happening is a bit of a moving target for them uh, because the information is changing. Uh, because the urgency of the situation is becoming increasingly apparent for a number of different reasons. Um, and, and it's been urgent so for a couple weeks, though. We've been yeah, hearing it, oh, that the problem is so acute. In terms of a couple weeks, you're, you're absolutely right, it has. Um, so at the end of the day, we are gonna go, we'll go it alone if we need to. Uh, 
Uh, our view, though, is, is that uh, notwithstanding that the federal government did the right thing in terms of buying TMX, and as you heard me say today, I, I, I give them credit for that. That was the, an absolutely the right thing for the federal government to do at the time. Uh, it, it is not a job uh, well done. It is a job well started. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that we that that project has now been delayed by about a year, if we're lucky, and and so as a result of that, we uh, we have a we have a, a very uh, distinct problem where we are selling our our product for about ten bucks a barrel uh, when the rest of the world's getting fifty, and that cannot go on for any length of time, and so we have to start finding ways um, to to ameliorate that problem. If you do go it alone and you don't get federal buy-in, how much will that cost the provincial government? Uh, we think at this point that it's probably about uh, net zero um, and uh, and with the possibility of it uh, being a, a, a and there being an upside um, to the people to, of Alberta to buy the trains yes uh, but uh, how you do know, you get to that number well and and we're we're in the midst of negotiations right now we we're well into negotiations in fact and I suspect we'll be able to get into more detailed announcements of that within weeks and so it's hard for me to get into the specifics if it's net zero without though, negating the negotiations if it's net zero, though, why do you need a federal gov the government, the federal government, to buy in? Uh, because you'd be putting money out and then and then having to get it back. And you know what? It, this is the federal government's jurisdiction. It's not really up to the province of Alberta to be investing in ways uh, to ameliorate the fact that we don't have the capacity to do interprovincial transportation of fundamentally important resources to the Canadian economy. So, um, so how much would the federal government have to put out? Well, we, uh, you know, there's a number of ways in which they could engage. They don't, we, and we said to them, you know, there's, there's different models that you could adopt. We're open to discussing that, um, uh, but we haven't had the chance to do that yet. So why isn't there a discussion happening here in Ottawa today about that? Did you request uh, a meeting with the Prime Minister? We didn't because uh, today, you know, we had a, a short time and we were out here for, for different reasons, uh, speaking to different people on different matters. Meanwhile, our officials are speaking and, uh, and uh, you know, we of course have the First Minister's meeting in, uh, in Montreal next week and, and so we'll see if there's an opportunity to have a greater level of discussion then. You have been quit critical for quite a while of the federal government's role in all this, especially in the lack of an ability to increase pipeline capacity. Uh, there are other pipelines though, not just TMX. There was Northern Gateway. This government, you know, effectively killed the decision to go forward with that. You, you know, when you were in opposition, were critical of that pipeline. You were not in favor of it, even when you won the election. Do you regret your actions when it comes to Northern Gateway, even Keystone initially as well? Well, you know, we, our government has actually focused uh, quite significantly on promoting uh, market access because we knew uh, once we got elected, we got sort of briefed on where things were going and, uh, and we knew that uh, we had a looming market access issue. So uh, our Minister of the Environment uh, went uh, down to the states to uh, uh, make submissions on behalf of uh, the proponents for Line 3 um, to make sure that it, it, it cleared regulatory hurdles. And she did that and, and she was part of a large team of people doing that, obviously, and it was successful. With uh, Keystone, uh, our government invested in, uh, in barrels on that to get it over the, uh, the finish line in terms of the final investment decision with respect to Keystone. So our government actually did uh, inject uh, effort into that plan. And then ultimately, uh, with respect to uh, TMX, you know we've been uh, a huge proponent. Um, you know, the, the issue with uh, um, the, the Northern Gate way was that of course there was there was a number of flaws with the way in which the uh, previous conservative government had had managed the, uh, the that particular application and so it was but, uh, but this government yeah. could have done the same thing they did with TMX and mm -hmm. embarked mm -hmm. on a new uh, con consultation process I mean even the court decision at Northern Gateway was kind of similar to the TMX one well in, in the short it was not really that the, the it highlighted the, the, the shortcomings breadth and depth of the problems uh, between the two are actually quite you know, one is uh, fixable with TMX. I'm not entirely sure that Northern Gateway was fixable. There was, there, there was, they, they so both So you agree failed, with the decision were, not to approve that pipeline? No, I, I don't think, I, I think that we should have kept all our options open, quite frankly. At this point, I think what we should have been doing is looking at the overall picture of what our market access needs were going to be and kept our options open until we got adequate, uh, adequate uh, pipeline. And so that's, that's what we're pushing now.
The federal government, though, at the mm -hmm. time, I mean, they pointed to insurmountable opposition. They felt like that's, and I'm putting words in their mouth, but mm -hmm. to paraphrase it, there was insurmountable opposition to Northern Gateway. And that, that's something you, you highlighted when you were talking in the last election about Northern Gateway. You said that, I think there's just too much environmental sensitivity there, and I think there's genuine concerns by the indigenous communities. I think from an environmental point of view, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. What, uh, at the end of the day, what we know we have to do is get market access to the West Coast. Our focus has always been um, on TMX because we believe that it was the, the, the easiest one to get going. We were pairing a pre-existing pipeline to a port which was already built that's used to being a port. So that, that is um, ultimately the way to go. I think that uh, propone, there, there's opportunity for new proponents to go the Northern Gateway route. Um, if uh, you know if they get uh, if they do it right um, and that's why you know you've got the Eagle Spirit group that's out there now and they're talking about partially upgraded bitumen it's a different product than was gonna, what was going to be in Northern Gateway all that kind of stuff but they can't even start looking at doing a better project now because of the tanker ban and our view is that the tanker ban is so uh, uh, broad that it, it shuts down the opportunity for people to do a better um, proposal to get to the West Coast and frankly um, until we get something to the West Coast we need to be keeping our options open. Okay I'm out of time. I'll okay. leave it there. Thanks Premier. Appreciate right. it. Nice Thank to see you, you again.